coming up, huh? Yeah. Back to satellite news gathering. This is the same rig I worked off of in February when we did a tour of the U.S.-Mexico border starting in San Diego, and we drove all the way to Brownsville. We actually stopped a little short of Brownsville. We got to Zapata, Texas, and that was the day the Ukraine invasion happened. So they pulled us off and actually sent my producer and correspondent to Ukraine to cover that event. I believe this network has several of the same rig. They're all built by the same upfitter. It's set up to do two feeds up and one down off of that auto positioning dish that's on the roof. I have not learned how to run the satellite side of the truck. I would like to. I am pretty familiar now with the other components, the routing, the cameras, the cellular link package, which is a TVU unit. We'll go through all of that a little bit later when I spend some time in the engineer's seat. Our truck engineer on this assignment is a full-time photographer for the network, but he's also trained up on this truck. The signal path is super simple for a single camera live shot. You've got your microphone patches into camera and then SDI out of the camera with embedded audio into the patch panel on the rig. And from the control panel, you can assign the router to the desired transmission path. I don't think spicy beans are good for you. You'll regret it. You need a bath. You want to try one? Don't bite my fingers. Mm, okay. So for this network, my responsibility as the photographer is to find a pretty shot that the producer and correspondent are also happy with, get it framed up, set up my lighting, set up the audio. In this case, I just used a lavalier with a windscreen. I prefer the boom when I have time and the ground accommodates a stand. When I'm patching into the truck, I've got a little bit more limitations than when working with a backpack in that I'm limited by cable runs and I can't cross streets and things like that. So there's a little bit of back and forth with the truck tech to get in a position where we're both happy. And if we're going up over satellite, obviously they have to be in a position where they can tune the antenna and have a clear shot to the, the bird. This is a, I think it's a Galaxy 7 is the satellite we're going off of. On this evening news live shots i think we did two of these two one hour blocks we were able to go over cellular we had a decent connection this is uh, one of the border crossings in del rio texas and the backlight i had sufficient backlight and cloud cover so i didn't set up a backlight i just had two foreground lights to warm up the face a little bit and then a tram wireless or wired lavalier for audio now the next piece is comms, communication. So you have an IFB, that's the earpiece in the correspondence head, internal fold back. That is a, a real time or low latency link back to the control room at the station. So nowadays everything's done over cellular connection. And then if we're in a super remote area, there are two sat phones on the truck where they can route that through belt packs and it's just XLR runs. That would be correct, Marnie, and of course there's a lot of concern about the number of migrants that have been crossing into the United States. That always gets so over the IFB, the correspondent is patched to the anchor desk so they can have a dialogue and do the Q&A. Now in parallel to that, there's a second comm link called a PL, producer's line, and that's what the cam op will dial in on. 14 hour day, started at 0500, but that included a drive in, which was right around three hours, and I was a passenger. So I slept for at least half that drive. And then uh, the whole day was kind of a bust. I was on standby waiting to shoot uh, news that didn't happen today. So I got all the way till we did a 1600 live shot for the news, afternoon news. And then we did a 1900 second hit. And I, I guess I shot a few minutes of B-roll. No, I didn't, uh, our other photog shot. I stood there and watched them get great shots for 15 minutes. So I've got my th two of three batteries <laughs> charging. When I get back from dinner, I'm going to put the third one on. Should be good to go tomorrow. I left my airline cases in the satellite truck and my tripods in the rental Tahoe. So crazy between canceled flights. I'm also seeming to end up in all these hotels that are under renovation. 
415 start, first hit at 0, 0500, and then we did four hours of hits on the hour. I forgot the tripod plate, left it in the wrong vehicle, so I'd use the lavalier case to prop the camera on the head and just keep a hand on it. No street lighting at this location, it's the border wall in the background, which is just a rust-colored steel. Got the car headlights on it, but they weren't bringing the level up enough, and I couldn't get the vehicles closer because it was a restricted area. So I ran the camera and I believe it was like eight or 10,000 ISO aperture 2.0, 50 mil prime. This is one of the struggles with a cinematic camera for news gathering. I got nice shallow depth of field, but you really need to see the background because it's the story. Look at how much this is costing Texas taxpayers. Good morning, Allie. Yeah, good morning, Mitch. So Governor Greg Abbott sending two buses with at least 95 migrants to the city of Chicago. That's according to the governor. But in this situation, working out of a rental car with a couple of battery lights, the alternative with a ENG camera would have been just a dark background. All right, I spent the morning doing live shots with a TV backpack out of the rental SUV. But now I'm back in the sat truck. So I got my camera case full of all the stuff I need. I left my other two airline cases in the rental. And then I um, also have the camera package that goes with the truck and a second photographer. So we can shoot two cam or we can break away and do separate coverage. So far we've all been doing different things, different times. All right, so here's the engineer's seats. It's the second row of a Suburban. It's a single seat back there. The other seats were removed to put this equipment cabinet in place. And I'm just cycling through the inputs on the router. We've got multiple internal cameras to be able to broadcast from the truck while it's in motion. And there's also a forward looking view and a pan tilt zoom rooftop cam that's high magnification. In addition, there is a FLIR forward looking infrared camera pan tilt. I don't think that one zooms on the roof. I haven't been able to power that up to play with it. And then up top left of the multi-view is the cellular link back to the network, which is the top most mounted green TV unit. And then top right of multi-view is the router output going to encoder one to go over satellite. And you can see the encoder packs, they're like the mid height of the, the rack there, those two gray units. It's possible to send two cameras at the same time. Colton the Cold, the city of Chicago says that their game plan is to take in every migrant, treat this very seriously, and give them the care and attention that they deserve, which has been similar to what we've heard from leaders in New York and Washington, D.C. Uh, we, we will tell you, Nicole, that there's been a lot of noise surrounding this whole issue of busing throughout all these major cities. So we end up finding one of these buses uh, that is full of migrants. I will show it to you right now. Uh, this is coming from our News Nation border truck, and this bus is currently uh, holding off uh, here in South Texas, waiting to fully fill up. That is one of the concepts here is, is that the bus must be completely full uh, before it ends up making its way out of state. Uh, we've now seen buses go to Chicago, New York, D.C. This one is on its way to our nation's capital. And uh, I mean, this is not the only bus that we've seen doing this, Nicole. We've seen over 200 buses leave from Texas, uh, go to New York, D.C., Chicago. Another 43 have left from the state of Arizona. Again, this one is uh, on its way off to Washington. So in between hits, I'm out shooting B-roll, and in this case, we were too close to the next deadline to be able to have the on-site producer edit it into a package. So instead, I'm coordinating with the feeds room at the network, and I'm going to do a play out from my camera over the TVU unit. This is a little bit of the challenge I'm struggling, bouncing between documentary filmmaking, broadcast sports, corporate interviews, commercial work, and then news. The challenge with news is you really only want to shoot the things that are going to air because everything is so rushed and you know it's essentially disposable media. I got to shoot it and get it out quick. So you want just enough heads and tails, not excessive, and you don't want to shoot three takes of a B-roll shot. You want to get it in one. Yeah, so right now what we can tell you is Texas Department of Emergency Management has confirmed that the bus that we're following right now, I can actually show you the bus here, we are heading to Washington, D.C. following this bus. You heard the mayor there talking about the governor. And so what we're doing out here right now is kind of trying to sift through the noise. 
or, or prove those misconceptions to be true, if, if they are true, that these migrants are being treated in a certain way. But right now, what we can tell you is Texas Department of Emergency Management says this bus is going to stop six times. There are going to be opportunities for people to get off that bus because they aren't going to be forced to stay on the bus. They're actually going to be able to communicate with their family members and their sponsors. And if that is a location where the bus stops, that makes more sense for them to get off. That could be a possibility for them. But right now, the bus that we're following is heading to Washington, D.C. And this is one of the uh, one of the only buses that has come out of Del Rio today. We watched it load up. Uh, coming from the Del Rio NGO, and that NGO, they have been processed already and released by Border Patrol. So while they came over here and on an illegal pathway, they are right now claiming asylum. They have been determined to go through those removal proceedings, which does include them to seek asylum. So which is yeah. why they're on these buses here now heading to their next destination. I think this is one of those assignments where I'll still be telling stories about it years from now. We went three days living out of these two vehicles, taking turns driving and sleeping and doing our primary roles. Governor Greg Abbott's bus kind of uh, project here, but a lot of people are calling a political stunt. So we wanted to go along here and experience it firsthand and bring you these exclusive details of exactly what's happening. Here's the first 14 hours of this bus ride. Was that on social or is that a No, that's email? an email, yeah covers from very far away but news nation is on the ground and on the road tracking the story close up texas governor greg abbott is sending thousands of migrants by bus to big cities like new york and right here in washington dc and most recently to chicago news nation's robert sherman is in the heartland and on his way east robert we can say that right following one of those buses and he joins yeah. me now robert to give us the scene here how far along are you and what is the situation what are the conditions like for these migrants on these buses. Well, Mike, we're now into the state of Tennessee. We're continuing to work our way east, about to cross over into Virginia rather shortly. Uh, we've been at this for well over a thousand miles and uh, the journey has just continued on here. I will tell you this though, Micah, we have learned a lot of things. Four hour blocks. Took a one hour nap, but other than that, drove 16 hours yesterday. Pretty much been on non stop for three days. And we are now in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. I can't even find the view, I'm so delirious. Here's the last of our migrants. I'd say about three quarters of them have already been transported by an NGO.